Hello, uh, this is the second part of the uh, boardwalk wheel experiment where I will present the binary decoder 74138 which is also a 3 to 8 decoder or 1 of 8 decoder and we call it 1 of 8 because depending on the address that is provided to the input of the chip only one out of eight outputs will be active. Think of an example where you need to enable one microphone out of eight, open one door out of eight. Any situation where it is one of n, you think of this these kind of decoders. And it's called binary decoder because the number of inputs is three and the number of outputs is two to the power three, which is eight. So first of all, the chip has to be enabled. And to be enabled, these inputs have to be active, which is four, five, and six pins. And in this case, you see these little circles, which we, I will call bubbles. Whenever there are bubbles, it means a zero will enable the chip. So you need a zero at pins four and five, that means ground, and five volt at pin six, because it's active high, no bubble. So if we assume the chip is enabled, then we have the inputs which are CBA in that order, right? CB in the most significant bit. And depending on the CBA status, then one of these eight outputs will be enabled or active. In this case, active, sorry. So in this case, pay attention to the binary combination as related to the subscript of the output. For example, 000, zero, zero will, in, will activate the output Y0. Zero. Zero, zero, 001, that means C equals 0, B equals 0, A equals 1, will activate the output Y1. And of course, Y1, uh, 111 will activate the output Y7. In this case, you also see bubbles at the output. So when active, that output is low, all the other outputs are high. That's the way it has been fabricated based on recommendations from engineers because some applications will take that into account and will take advantage of it. So because we want the LED to turn on when an output is active, which means low, and that's why we are connecting the cathode to the output and the anode through a resistor, which limits the current, is connected to plus 5 volts. Since this is true for all the eight resistors that are needed to protect the eight LEDs, so the common point of those resistors, assuming that you're using a SIP, single end line uh, package, right, type of resistor, then that common point should be connected to the power, right, to VCC, to 5 volts. And as I told you before, when you look at the package, and you can see the writing. On the left side, there is a dot. That dot is that common point. So, in this case, when we build it, as the counter, and of course, in this case, we're going to use only QC, QB, QA. QC being the most significant bit because it's only it's only a three-bit input, right? So we ignore QD. And when you look at the binary counter that we used before, even though it can count from 0 to 15, but if you look at the truth table of QC, QB, QA, you will see that it goes from 0 to 7, 0 to 7, 0 to 7, all the time. So as it goes from 0 to 7, one LED is going to be on, then it's going to be the next, it's going to be the next until the eighth one, then it's going to be back to the first one, and so on, it repeats itself. So in this case, we're going to see how it works, I mean, uh, from a practical point of view, and let's see what happens. As you see here, uh, when the circuit is powered up, and of course I wanted to remind you that even though the, the, on the, on the on multi-sim uh, circuit diagram, it does not show the power and the ground for, for the, uh, the chip, the binary decoder, make sure that pin 16 is connected to 5 volts, and pin 8 is connected to ground. And of course, in this case, as we said before, uh, 4 or 5 are connected to ground, 6 is connected to 5 volts, 
uh, and then of course we connected the QC QBQA to uh, to the one two three pins, and uh, we connected the outputs which happened to be pin fifteen. Uh, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, and 7 in that order, right? And so in this case, this is connected to pin 15, and which is Y0, all the way to pin 7, which is Y7. And as you see there, the LEDs will turn on one at a time, and it rotates, and then it goes back and repeats the cycle again. Hello, uh, this is just uh, an additional uh, piece of information uh, just to let you know how, how your uh, imagination can provide for any, uh, any uh, end product you want to. For example, by changing the capacitor, which was 47 microfarad to 0.1 microfarad, so it's about uh, 500 times uh, faster, right? Obviously, in this case, all the LEDs would look like they're on at all times. Why? Because the eye cannot see uh, or, or will retain the light for a longer period than uh, a fast-changing device. And so to you, it would look like, and in fact, if I made it even faster, it would look like solid red, right? No flickering, nothing, right? As if they're all on all the time. But that's not true. I mean, the diodes are really, the LEDs are really turning on and off. It's just that the eyes cannot visualize that. But what I'm saying here is that if you want to turn it into a game, right, you could say, for example, okay, here we have uh, choices one all the way to eight. So our numbers from one to eight. And you choose a number, and when I stop the count, or when I stop the uh, the, the circuit from uh, affecting the LEDs, wherever the light stops, that's the winner, right? For example, in this case, of course, I could have used uh, I could have used the switch to either uh, disable the timer, or I just remove the clock, and when I remove the clock, it stops somewhere. I put it back, it runs again, then it stops somewhere else. So you can turn it into those boardwalk wheel. That's why we, we called it that way, like in the, you see in, the, in areas of recreation. And people would choose numbers and then, of course, it will have a lot more numbers. Another type of uh, uh, variation, you could make it... Uh, uh, change two LEDs at a time. So two LEDs will be on and then they move, right? Like the ones that have them around the license plates. I don't know if it's legal though. But uh, of course you will find out when we deal with Arduino that it'll be a lot easier, a lot simpler and less expensive to change the pattern whenever you feel like it just by changing a few lines of code. Whereas here you may have to change the whole design. So only imagination can be an obstacle to whatever you can do. Good luck with the circuit.